That's two more doors than the model often considered the first luxury SUV, the 1970 Range Rover, which threw spies off its trail with the Veiler name, which means veiled in Latin, on prototypes. Admittedly, some Americans argue for the Jeep Wagoneer, a staple of my own outdoorsy family, as the first lux truck. The Super Wagoneer of 1966, especially, adopted such unexpected luxuries as an automatic transmission, air conditioning, power steering and push-button radio. Hey, if you were from Michigan, those features seemed almost too precious for a truck that was just going to end up with dead animals strapped to the roof. Something tells me that Bambi is safe wherever the Range Rover Veeler will roam, its owners preferring kayaks to corpses and its hunter-gatherers satisfied with trips to Whole Foods. Some people have wondered the why of the mid-size Veeler, since it's just 3 inches shorter and 2 inches slimmer than the Range Rover Sport. Then you look at the Veeler, and you get it, this is a pure style play, and no SUV brand plays that game as well as Land Rover. Frankly, since SUVs are the new luxury cars, that also means SUVs should be made for women who might roll their eyes at the Rover Sport's manly man attitude. From its movie set looks to its silken performance, the Veeler doesn't give a damn about anything but flattering its occupants for their discerning taste and evident success. Since the Veeler's ostensible $50,895 base price is the ultimate SUV bait and switch, the bait being four-cylinder gasoline and diesel engines that you can't have in the Rover Sport, get ready for thousands of Rover fans to flatter themselves, even if they end up spending closer to $70,000 or more on their Veelers. Man or woman, gay or straight, my Brooklyn neighbors fairly trembled at the sight of the Veeler R Dynamic HSE, though perhaps the single-digit temperatures had something to do with it. The $90,170 sticker price would have made them quiver for sure. This high-design rover shares a largely aluminum platform and some mechanicals with a stylish cousin, the Jaguar F-Pace. The Veeler's dramatic 21-inch alloy wheels and soft iron blue paint, it would make a great eyeshadow shade contrasted with fresh snow on the street. That snow barely affected the Veeler's dash around town, thanks to a steely 380 horsepower and 332 pound-feet of torque from a supercharged 3.0-liter V6. The Veeler accelerates from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 5.3 seconds. Though I might note that a BMW X3 M40i does it in 4.8 seconds, and for about $10,000 less. Strivers can choose a more affordable Veeler with the 2.0-liter, 247-horse four-cylinder also found in the Range Rover Evoc, and no one at the Bikram Yoga Studio will be the wiser. For the ultimate in dual personality, there's also the 2.0-liter diesel from Jaguar Land Rover's Ingenium engine family. The diesel's acceleration is leisurely, at 8.4 seconds to 60 miles per hour, but that Veeler achieves 2630 miles per gallon in city and on the highway, respectively. All three engines come mated to an eager, paddle-shifted, 8-speed automatic transmission. The Veeler's body and seating positions are lower than the typical rover, but it can handle surprising off-road rigors. Rover's stellar adjustable terrain response and all-terrain progress control systems are on board, monitoring wheel movements 500 times per second and adjusting the SUV's systems to better traverse mud, ruts, snow, boulders, even perilous curb blocks at the mall. An optional electronic air suspension boosts ground clearance to a maximum of 9.9 .9 inches, enough to wade through 25.6-inch deep water. A locking rear differential is an option. Yet more than the square-jawed Rover Sport, the Veeler looks too damn pretty for such abuse. It would be like playing fetch in a muddy yard with a Bichon frise. I definitely wouldn't allow Fifi's nasty paws in my Veeler, especially one swaddled in cream-colored, perforated leather. Come to think of it, the entire Veeler seems formed from the richest cream, from its molded dessert body to its coddling ride. Jerry McGovern, Rover's chief designer, has become reputed for his sharp eye and impeccable London taste, but he's outdone himself here. The F-Pace is one handsome devil, but the Veeler looks even richer and more sophisticated. The Veeler's minimalist sculpture seems a new design peak for the SUV including those far pricier but less compelling baubles from Bentley, Rolls or Lamborghini. Power retracting door handles amplify the Rover's yacht hulled symmetry. Unusually brutal temperatures in New York did mar that design, when one door handle temporarily got stuck in a half-open position. 
Josh Condon, the drive's deputy editor, had a more distressing and hazardous winter experience. On a drive to Pennsylvania, all four of the Wheeler's side windows fogged up, to the point that Condon couldn't use the passenger side exterior mirror. The windshield fogged badly as well, requiring use of the max day frost setting, which still left foggy patches and uncomfortably raised the humidity inside. Condon tried everything, opening and closing windows, adjusting every climate setting, but the side glass still looked like bathroom mirrors after a hot shower. And while every other virtual button worked fine, the digital Max Defrost and Max AC switches refused to operate unless Condon mashed them with bruising pressure. Despite any sore digits, Condon still gave a big thumbs up overall, impressed by the Wheeler's style, luxury and performance. That, in a nutshell, is the Range Rover story, loyalists put up with quirks and flaws, because these SUVs are so rewarding in other regards. Modern infotainment has long been among those flaws. Not so long ago, Land Rovers, and Jaguars, infotainment systems would have thrown Fred Flintstone into a tantrum. The more recent in-control touch pro system joined the modern era, but its screen interface was still a disjointed mess. For the Wheeler, it's try, try again. A new Touch Pro Duo system heightens the Wheeler's art gallery vibe, with many navigation, climate and vehicle controls moved to a pair of stacked screens. The glossy surfaces are a magnet for fingerprints, but once up and running, the system brings serious visual drama. The only analog switches are a volume control and a clever pair of rotary knobs that change function depending on what screen is displayed, the knobs control temperature, but press the outer ring, and they adjust seat heat. Smartly done. Screen response is much faster than the old setup, unless you get one with editor Condon's stubborn buttons, and graphics are sharp, including pretty animations of the Wheeler in case you forgot what it looks like. Ditto for a set of touch pads on the steering wheel, which even change their touch point readouts on the wheel itself. Yet considering the vast screen real estate, there's a scatter of tiny, button icons that are hard to operate in motion and a few too many functions are digitized for my taste. Yet by Jaguar Land Rover standards, Touch Pro Duo is a major advance, and I got the hang of it soon enough. Enough twiddling, and on to driving, where Jaguar's F-Pace cousin is stiff-legged and aggressively sparty, a speedy footballer, say, the Wheeler is more the team owner, content to watch the games from his well-insulated suite. The Wheeler proved swift and capable on country two-laners, but it's less agile than the F-Pace. Considering the Wheeler V6 weighs about 4,400 pounds, at least 600 fewer pounds than a Range Rover Sport, I honestly expected more of a quicksilver handling feel. The V6 also sounds subdued and fairly ordinary. Yet the steering is polished, and this V6 Wheeler will still reach 155 miles per hour if asked. Compared with the nearly toy-like Evoque, the Wheeler's expanded passenger and cargo space should be another selling point. There's just enough room for two tall adults in back, including 37.2 inches of rear legroom. For comparison, a Honda Civic sedan offers 37.4 inches, while a Toyota Corolla offers a relatively vast 41.4 inches. And thank God the Wheeler has four-wheel drive, because its price climbs like a Sherpa on Everest. The $50,895 base price describes a Wheeler with a 2.0-liter gasoline engine and few deluxe features, not even an S, SE or HSE designation that denotes the hierarchy of trim levels. Better to consider the Wheeler S as the true starter model, at $55,695. The diesel engine adds a reasonable $1,500 premium, at $57,195. For some JLR brand perspective, that's about $10,000 more than a Jaguar F-Pace 20D with the same diesel engine. Adding supercharged V6 Hustle will cost you $65,195 for a Wheeler S, or $68,305 for the SE, and these are likely the versions you most often see on showroom floors. Some automotive media have talked smack about how the Wheeler costs $16,000 less than a Range Rover Sport, but comparing a stripper Wheeler to any Range Rover Sport is ridiculous. Let's talk showroom reality, the base model RR Sport SE starts fairly well equipped from $67,695. It may have only a 340 horsepower version of the 3.0 liter V6, 
but it actually cost $600 less than a Velar SEV6, not thousands more. With the identical 380 horsepower V6, the Range Rover Sport HSE is $73,345. That's $5,000 more than a Velar SE, and that Velar offers slightly less standard equipment. You can go crazy on a Range Rover Sport as well, but that's with leather-launched V8 power, $83,145 with a 518 horsepower supercharged V8, or about $114,000 for the 575 horsepower Range Rover Sport SVR. Bottom line, if you prefer the Range Rover Sport to the Velar, and you demand a V6 regardless, you can have one without denting the monthly payment. For 2018, the Range Rover Sport even adopts the dual-screen touch pro system, albeit with a less dramatic dashboard integration.